All right, welcome to chapter 11, section one, called Parallel Lines and Transversals. This is for Integrated Math 1. Uh, so uh, the first couple of things that you'll see on your screen here, sorry, you can hear my dog playing with the dog toy in the background here. Uh, the first couple of things you'll see um, is a due date. I don't see that on the teacher preview, but you do see it on your student screen. Um, and then the next thing is the uh, number of attempts. So you always have unlimited attempts on homework, tests, and quizzes. Uh, number of questions just tells you how many questions on this particular assignment. Grading policy is always best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is the one you keep. And partial credit is enabled. So um, if you answer, you know, one um, out of so many questions, usually there's more than one question correctly, then you get credit for that partial answer. Um, I think it might also give you partial credit within the problem. Um, not 100% sure on that one, but I think that's actually one of the settings we did click on. Um, so, you know, normally I just suggest it's kind of the entire problem as the partial credit. Um, please remember, once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. What that means is once I click start down here in the bottom right corner, we will see a submit assignment button. Um, that is how we finish an assignment is by clicking that button. So instead of just closing this tab or closing our computers, um, we want to make sure that when we're ready to leave this screen, we click submit assignment. It does two big things. Number one, like that last screen said, you can't work on anything else until you finish the assignment. So until we click on that button, everything else in Alex is locked out, even resources. So um, it's going to assume you want to leave this attempt open, even though you have unlimited attempts, so you don't need to leave it open. It'll assume you want to leave it open and it'll lock everything, make you come back to this one. So that's one big reason, click that button so you don't get locked out of everything. The second big reason is that it actually affects the grade book when you click submit assignment so your teacher can see what you've been working on. Up until that point, your account's basically frozen. We can't see anything that you've been doing. So two big reasons to click that button. All right, on the side here, we have explanation, example, and message center. Explanation tells you you're going to lose your question attempt because it's going to give you the answer to this question. So it's not going to give you the answer and then let you come type it in. Um, example does give you a lot of background generally, and we do have some background we need to go over. So we know what corresponding angles, alternate interior or exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are. So we need to know what quite a few things are um, in order to complete this problem. Um, and we also need to understand, you know, what is a transversal and what relationship does that create to two lines that it crosses. Um, so lots of background there. You can click on explanation again to get uh, another explanation or another example. Sorry. Um, oh, dang it. And then you can also click on message center so that um, you can message your teacher directly from the screen and it attaches a picture so we know where to come help you. All right, let's go ahead and do this problem. Um, so with this guy, like I was saying, we have um, what's called a transversal. So we're gonna call this the transversal. Transversal, and I started to do this on the last video and realized we weren't actually using transversals in the last video. They just had a, a diagram that kind of looked like we were. Um, I wonder. I don't know if I can get it to do this. Let's see. Oh. Darn it. I wanted it to be diagonal. Ooh, that's pretty close. Okay. I was trying to use my parallel lines tool and it was kind of sort of working there. Okay. So we have two lines that are going through this. It's not perfect on here, but we're going to, you know, pretend like these are. So these are parallel lines. Now in this diagram, they're not parallel, but the naming still works the same. It's the relationship that we'll actually see in the next section that's going to change based on whether or not they're parallel. Um, so it does say parallel lines and transversals. For whatever reason, they don't give us parallel lines here. Um, I can definitely see if I continue these down, they would cross somewhere down here, you know, probably pretty far down, but they still look like they're coming together to me. Um, so if we have parallel lines and a transversal, um, then we have certain relationships that go with them. Um, and corresponding alternate interior and alternate exterior are the ones we're going to focus on. So corresponding means that they're in the same relative position. Well, what does that mean? Um, so if I'm thinking of the transversal and I go from the transversal to the parallel, so I'm on the left side of the transversal and I'm above this parallel line. I want to try to repeat that exact same direction that I just did, um, or the direction system, I guess, that I'm using, 
on the other parallel line. So I want to be on the left side of the transversal and above the other parallel line. So that's what I mean by the same relative position, um, meaning on the parallel lines are kind of in the same position. Um, you can also see, and I'm gonna try to do this nice and neatly, if I lasso this guy like that, so I can actually take this guy and scoot it, boom, right down into this one. And if you notice, they fit perfectly, don't they? So that is a very crazy, you know, cool visual of corresponding angles are congruent. Um, so I can also do that, and I'm gonna undo so it doesn't look all funky like that. So I'm gonna lasso the other side here. If I were to go on the right side and above the transversal, so let's see, why isn't it doing it? Oh, it was doing it, I just couldn't see it. Ooh, okay, so I've lassoed that guy. Now if I bring this one down, look at that, it matches right on top. And I know it's not quite perfect because I'm not moving it quite right, but they do fit right into each other. Now this is only true, the congruent part is only true if the lines are parallel. So the two blue lines are parallel. Now in our diagram over here, they're not parallel. We can still say that angle two, if I were to cut this one away and I could scoot it over into angle six, angle two and angle six are corresponding, but they might not be congruent. Um, they probably aren't because these two lines do not look parallel to me. Um, and we can do the same thing. I'm gonna undo that guy. Um, so I'm gonna lasso this inside one like this. Now I have that guy, and I can scooch this one down into this other spot here. So I, I really like this visual because I'm kind of just sealing the angle. So you can see they fit right nicely into each other. So it's kind of like corresponding angles. I like to describe them in classes. They, they kind of slide. Um, you can slide one right down to the other or one right up into the other. So they, they kind of slide back and forth, or if you're going side to side, um, so I can take, you know, two and go over six or four to eight, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in. I'll go four to eight since that's the last one I said. This is not the only two options. I can do this in the bottom, one to five or three to seven. So there's a lot of different options for corresponding angles. All right, if we go to alternate interior angles. So alternate has to do with, it kind of describes two things. So alternate means different sides of the transversal. So alternate, you know, one side or the other. Um, and it can be left or right, or like this one, our transversal's going left to right, so it would be above or below. Kind of just depends on your diagram. Um, but different sides of the, the transversal. It also means kind of opposite sides of the figure. Um, we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that idea too. Um, interior, so interior has to do with, what do we want to make interior? And I'll airbrush this guy. Let's see, do I have... I'm gonna make that a little bigger so it airbrushes a little nicer. So the interior here, so this is the interior in between the parallel lines. The exterior, um, we'll go ahead and make that green. Oh, no, we already did green. Um, I'll make it bright green. So the exterior is gonna be this outside area here, like this. So when we're using those words, that's what they mean. Interior is in between the parallel lines, exterior is outside the parallel lines. So it's just kind of a very cute little visual so we can see very quickly interior, exterior. Um, so if I want alternate interior, I want to be in the yellow area, the in between the parallel lines. Um, so I'm going to just pick an angle here, so I'll pick this guy. Um, so it's on the left side of the transversal. So I need to go to the other side, the alternate side but I don't wanna just go right across, I wanna go right across and then kinda of opposite. I wanna go as far away as I possibly can without leaving the inside here. Um, so it's on the right side and it's on the opposite end of the figure. Kind of an idea. So these two would also be congruent and I can also lasso this guy because I really like these visuals. I think they help quite a lot. So if I just scoot it over, that doesn't quite work. But if I scoot it over and I spin this guy, come on, spin. Boom, oh, look at this. Look how nicely it's gonna fit right there into that angle. Oh my goodness. So 
it definitely works out the same way as the corresponding angles. Alternate interior angles are also congruent. So if I take this other side, I can do the same thing here. And I keep moving from kind of the top of the diagram down, but I could have also moved this angle to over here that the, the whole toolbar is covering up a little bit, but I could have moved that angle too. All right, so it doesn't work quite right until I spin it around like this. Now it will work. Boom. So it works out very nicely there where it, it drops right into place. Um, now if I kind of unspin it so that it you know fits right back here, the main thing is, so this is on the right side, if I just go to the left side of the line, even if I spun this around, it's not going to fit into that spot. The only way we would have a congruent angle on the, the right and the left side is if we had perpendicular lines, meaning that they were right angles. Then they would be the same, but otherwise they're not going to be the same. And the reason we learned this, you know, in a couple sections ago, these are linear angles or linear pairs, so they have to add up to 180. So generally one is going to be bigger and one's going to be smaller, and they're going to add up to 180, but they're not going to be the same um, unless they're perpendicular, meaning they're both 90 degrees. That's the only way we can have that happening. All right, so now we know in between the two lines, and in, which should be parallel, but we're just going to stay in between. So this time we're in between here, so anything in here. So if I pick four, I need to go to the opposite side of the transversal and slide as far away as I can without leaving the inside. So it's going to be four and five. Four and five. Okay. So now alternate exterior angles, and I guess I will go, um, let's see what color have I not, I haven't used bright blue yet. Um, so with this one, I have exterior and alternate. So I know I want to be in the green, and let's go ahead and pick from the bottom, because I keep picking from the top and going down. So we can pick from the bottom, I'm gonna, just going to pick this angle here. So this is on the right side, I know I want to go to the left side, that's alternate, but alternate also means go as far away as I possibly can. And in this case, since it's exterior, I want to go all the way to the other side. So it's actually going to be this green one that we've already used. So this is on the right side. It's the opposite side, left, right, and opposite sides of the diagram. And they're both on the outside of the parallel lines. So they're, they're in that green area there. And again, I could cut this guy away and bring it right down here. It would fit right on top. Or I could do it with these two here they would also work. Um, so if I go outside the parallel line, so I'm going to go outside here, so I'll go ahead and choose number one. So number one is on the bottom of the transversal, since this transversal is going left to right, it's going to be bottom or top. So I'm on the bottom, so I want to go to the top and slide as far away as I can, so that would be eight. So one and eight. All right, and again, not the only options here. I can definitely choose other options. All right, um, check. All righty. So that was um, section one for chapter 11. I will see you in section two.